Good morning. Good morning, beloved children of God. Welcome to worship on this second Sunday of January, this third Sunday after Christmas. We just welcome you wherever you are this morning. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. We want to just uh, invite God in to our midst, God who is already here. Today we is the baptism of the Lord Sunday. And so we'll take some time throughout the service to remember our baptism and what that means to us this day. But we've come to worship God. We've come to worship Jesus. We've come to be connected to the Holy Spirit that dwells in Jesus and dwells in us. And so let us sing our opening song. We've come to worship you. Something has stood out to you each day. 
Maybe as you've read those Proverbs, you've even written paraphrases in your own words of those verses of that chapter. I want to thank all of those that have written on the Facebook page, sharing their comments. Today, we read Proverbs 10, and I'm not going to read all of Proverbs 10, but because today we're going to focus on words matter. I want to uh, share a little bit about Proverbs 10, and it, it is a chapter that is full of contrast. I'll call it the but chapter. If we do, and God does, there's blessings upon blessings. But if we don't follow and let our butts get us in trouble, trouble will be the result, not blessings. And so here, these selected verses, the wise of heart will heed commandments, but a babbling fool will come to ruin. <laughs> Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all offenses. On the lips of one who has understanding, wisdom is found, but a rod is for the back of one who lacks sense. Lying lips conceal hatred, and whoever utters slander is a fool. Lord, have mercy. When words are many, transgression is not lacking, but the prudent are restrained in speech. The tongue of the righteous is choice silver. The mind of the wicked is of little worth. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for lack of sense. The mouth of the righteous brings forth wisdom, but the perverse tongue will be cut off. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth, but the mouth of the wicked is perverse. Lord God, we come to worship you. We come to praise you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. May all that we do, may all that we say be a blessing to the Lord.
want to bless the Lord today. I want to bless the Lord this week. How do we bless the Lord? We bless the Lord by lifting his name up. We bless the Lord by living right. We bless the Lord by loving the Lord with our mind, body, and soul, and loving our neighbors as ourselves. Love is the key to blessing the Lord. Love is the key. And if we follow in the footsteps of Jesus, we just love everybody. I don't know. I think that just makes it easier. Makes it easier than trying to figure out, oh, I'm gonna love this person, I can't love that person. This person is worthy of love and that person is not worthy of love. We're all God's children. We're all God's children. So we love everybody because God first loved us. This morning as we come to God in prayer, 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 communicating with God, communicating with God for ourselves, communicating with God on behalf of others, intercessory prayer. We come to lift up the prayers of the people this morning. We want to pray for our sister, Vanita Jones, whose brother passed away in New York. Vanita and her sister in Southern Cal are coordinating their travel schedules to go back to New York to care for their brother's body and his business. And so we ask travel mercies for them, that God would just protect them, and that God would receive their brother into the everlasting arms of rest. We come praying for our sister Arnell and sister Mae Harvey, scheduled to have medical procedures this coming week. We give thanks. We give thanks to God that we have some praise reports. Sharon Stockman is recovering well from her, her surgery. Has a medical visit to see what next steps are. We were praising and they got everything that they needed to get during the surgery. We're thankful that Benny Joel Smith's eye surgery went well. And so Lord, give her a new vision new vision that she might walk with you in a new way. Lord God, we have lots of prayers, prayers for healing, prayers for recovery from COVID. We have prayers, oh God, for those who've had to have surgeries and amputations, we pray for our relatives whom we can't see because it is COVID. But may they feel our prayers, their loved ones' prayers, the prayers of the church, oh God. And most of all, might they feel your presence. Lord God, we know this COVID has been around for a while now. We know the numbers continue to escalate. And Lord, we confess that sometimes it's just hard to stay home. So Lord God, help us to stay put. Help us not to 
travel to those absolutely necessary so that we can bring these numbers down and this COVID under control, oh God. We thank you for the technology that helps us to have FaceTime or Zoom visits or Skype visits with our family. We know it's not the same. We know it's not the same to be able to hug and to touch one another. But Lord God, if we do what we have to do, if we make the sacrifices that we have to make, we'll be able to see our loved ones soon. So give us the strength and give us the courage for the living of these days. Help us to be silent, to know that you are God. Lord God, we're waiting in the water. We know you're stirring up the water, but we know you to be a deliverer, a rescuer, and a healer. And so we place our trust in you this day. Hear the prayers of the people this morning, oh God, for you know all of our hearts. Hear our prayer. Have mercy. Be our help. We pray all of this in the matchless and precious name of Jesus the Christ taught us to say when we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. celebrate the 21st birthday of our brother Martel Nixon. Amen. Tomorrow we celebrate with brother Lavelle Brown. And if the camera can swing over uh, to our brother Maceo on the other camera here. Maceo, you got to look back that way. Amen. <laughs> Maceo has been here faithfully uh, helping to record their services that you see up on YouTube. And uh, Maceo is an honorary Easter Hiller. Amen. Amen. So we celebrate Maceo's birthday on Tuesday along with our sister Gwen Johnson. Amen. Amen. Today is, uh, as we prepare for our offering, we want to let you know that next Sunday is the first of the six special Sundays in the United Methodist Church. It is Human Relations Day. And your gift helps care for all of God's children. In his letter from the Birmingham jail in April of 1963, the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. wrote, 
just as the prophets of the 8th century BC left their villages and carried, carried their thus saith the Lord far beyond the boundaries of their hometowns. And just as the apostle Paul left his village of Tarsus and carried the gospel of Jesus Christ to the far corners of the Greco-Roman world, so I am compelled to carry the gospel of freedom beyond my hometown. And so generous gifts to the church-wide special offering support three vital ministries, community developers, the United Methodist Volunteer, volunteer Services, both related to the General Board of Global Ministries, and the Youth Offender Rehabilitation overseen by the General Board of Church and Society. And so I ask that uh, you would give generously to Human Relations Day to strengthen our community outreach and to empower our at-risk kids. They can check out to Easter Hill and on the memo rock line, write Human Relations Day. Lives are being changed and transformed because of the generosity of Methodists around the world including right here in this church and community. So I thank you in advance. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. We ask that God would bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name, amen. I think we're ready for our moment with the children. I know this. Sharon is ready. Karen is ready, Karen is ready. Diversion to take the focus off themselves. 
look at what this person, look at him, look at her, look at her shoes, look at her hair, look at yours. <laughs> I didn't mean that, God, but you know what I mean. Uh, bullies put others on front street. That's the same as what I just said, so you don't focus on what they do. Bullies tell, I don't like saying the word lie, but bullies tell stories and don't tell the truth. Even when the other people know they aren't telling the truth, we know you're not telling the truth. That's a bully. And they'll try to get you to believe it. Bullies don't like being asked what they do, why they do it, and they'll surround themselves with people who don't ask questions. You know, a bully always has a sidekick or a little gang of followers. They do not ask, why did you do that? Why did you say that? So what can you do about that? Uh, my mother's last words, if you knew Hattie Langston, think for yourself. Okay. I hear that all the time, I heard it yesterday. In her, think for yourself. If you know it's not right, and I'm not talking to adults, I'm talking to kids, I'm talking to children, think for yourself. If you know it's wrong, don't do it, don't say it. Stand up to the bully. I've told you this before, you don't have to get my full body, but if you just take a, just stand like this, uh -huh. and kind of rear back and say, what? Uh -huh. You know, and, and look them in the eye. Amen. But if there's a bully after you and you just kind of shrivel up and kind of do like, they got you. Uh -huh. They got you. Uh, speak up, tell anyway. I'm gonna be done in a minute. A bully will tell you, don't tell what I did. Don't you tell anybody, kids. Please tell anybody, come tell me, tell me. Last things you can do, pray for the bullies. Believe it or not, you're supposed to pray that God will harden their hearts and make their hearts not be bullying anymore. And love your enemies, love your enemies. My last one's in the Bible. If you Google, you know you Google everything else, Google bullying in the Bible. And you'll get three stories. The story of Daniel, the story of Esther, and the story of Jesus. Thank you, children. Thank you, everybody. for this morning comes from Mark, the first chapter, the fourth through the eleventh verses. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, 
with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the, scout and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. A voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved, with you, I am well pleased. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. And there was evening and there was morning. The first day. I may not have, yesterday's gone. And I might not have another day. Thank God there's a new baptism. And I've got today another chance. I'm glad I got one more day.
for today, for giving us one more day. We give God thanks for our baptism, reminding us that we are God's children, that we have been forgiven, that we've been forgiven a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance. He keeps giving us chances to get it right. God is with us. So we thank him for this day. Don't worry about yesterday. Today is a brand new day. May all we do be to the glory of God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for our baptism. Thank you for claiming us as your children. We thank you and we love you. We thank you and we love you. Keep us close to you, oh God. Keep us close to you this day and every day of our lives. Want to just lift up one other prayer request. Want to pray for the family of Barbara Bonner, for her husband Michael, and for Barbara's mom. Gussie Berry, and for the five sisters that remain here in the land of the living. Barbara went home to be with the Lord last Sunday. And so we thank God for, for Barbara, quiet in voice, but strong in spirit. A teacher, a teacher who touched many, a teacher who worked with those that were on the margins to lift them up. We give God thanks for her life and ask God to be with her family. This morning I want to talk about words matter. Right. Yes, sir. And as I talk about words matter, I want to invite you to call the sisters, Shirley and Debbie and Edie and Sue Ann and Marion and call Gussie. Send cards. Words matter, especially in times of grief. Words matter. Yes, they do. Words matter. Mm. We've heard many words this week. Yeah. Words that incite it. Yeah. Words of shock and really? disbelief, words of surprise, words that blamed, mm -hmm. words of privilege, mm -hmm. words that question, many words spoken on TV, many words written in the news and in magazines and on the internet, well. words explaining words encouraging impeachment and censorship, mm. censor, words to ensure accountability, a word here, a word there, a word, word everywhere. Everybody is speaking words this week. Everyone has something to say. Let us pray. Lord God, we are hearing all kinds of words. Some are truthful and some are not. Some are from our own desires. Some are from a political party perspective. But Lord God, the words that we want to hear is a word from the Lord. A word that gives hope, a word that gives life, a word that speaks justice and peace. And so Lord God, may we listen. May we listen to the words that you speak. Whether they're words that come through a still small voice, 
whether they're words that speak loudly, whether they're words that speak through your creation. May we listen and hear your word and respond accordingly. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. And God's beloved said, Amen. Genesis tells us that in the beginning when God created, God created the heavens and the earth, all that you see and that you don't see. Earth was a soup of nothingness, a bottomless emptiness, an inky blackness. God's spirit brooded like a bird above the watery abyss. God spoke, let there be light, and light appeared. God saw that light was good and separated light from the dark. God named the light day. He named the dark night. It was evening. It was morning. Day one. The text describes a theological and moral universe as in God saw that it was good. Yeah. Not scientific or historical, as in milliseconds after the Big Bang, the universe was 95% hydrogen and 5% everything else. Those who insist that the creation took place in exactly six 24-hour days missed the point as well. When God speaks, new life comes. All right. What God speaks is good. God separated the light from the dark, well, not the black from the white, right now. not the white from the black. All right. yes. God separated the light from the dark. Mm -hmm. through, divine, through divinely and godly speech, God spoke and light was created. God wants us to have light so that we don't live in darkness, so that we don't live in fear. God wants us to be able to see more clearly so he has given us light. We need God's light more than ever in these dark times. Never in my lifetime, and I know never in your lifetime, did you ever expect to Witness what we witnessed this week. My Lord, yes. my Lord. May it never happen again. What a dark time in our nation's yes. history. Yes, There's something wrong. Hmm. something wrong. There's some troubled souls. Hmm. There's some folks that don't know the Lord. And they need to hear a word from the Lord. We got to love everybody. Right. We have to pray for everybody, especially those that don't know the Lord. In the Gospel of Mark, today is Baptism of the Lord Sunday on the Christian calendar. We hear in the Gospel of Mark the story of Jesus' baptism. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. John's words were words of invitation to new life. John was inviting people to change their lives, to turn around and away from attitudes, behaviors, and actions in words that didn't give life. He was inviting them to have their sins forgiven. Anybody listening this morning want, that wants their sins forgiven? I know I do. Or do you want to hold on to them, allowing them to control you and to make you miserable? Got to let go. Got to let go. Can't carry yesterday with you or you'll miss out on the blessings of today. 
Turn your sins over to God and leave them there. Leave them there so that you can receive the blessing and the gift of new life. The story tells us the people were baptized confessing their sins. Maybe their prayer was something like, Lord, forgive me for the things I have said or done or not said or done that have caused harm to others and myself. Help me to be better, to do better, to cause good trouble, that I would bring glory to your name. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Then John spoke some more words. The one who is more powerful than I yeah. is coming after me. Yeah. Just wait. Hold on. Mm. The Lord is coming. The Lord is coming to intervene into your life and to my life. I have baptized you with water, yeah. but he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And not just will the water make you clean, but he's going to put something new in you. He's going to put some new fire yeah. in you. He's going to put a new spirit in you. He's going to breathe his breath in you anew, afresh. These are words of promise, words of hope, words of prophecy being fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Jesus comes, praise the Lord, and is baptized. Hallelujah. Yeah. After he comes up out of the water, he saw the sky split open and God's spirit looking like a dove come down on him. Along with the spirit, a voice speaking words that mattered. You are my son. The beloved, with you I am well pleased. Or from the message translation, you are my son, chosen, marked by my love, pride of my life. Oh, how Jesus must have felt to be acknowledged as a child of God, God's own son the beloved, the pride of God's life. Jesus hasn't even begun his public ministry. And God says, with you I am well pleased. What words of encouragement. I don't know about you, but when I hear such words, I have a sense of who I am and whose I am, and I don't want to disappoint God. Right. How often have you seen a, a parent in a store a parking lot or in the neighborhood calling their child who's a gift from God, dumb, stupid, telling them that they are no good or, or how they'll amount to nothing or how disappointed they are in them and asking why they couldn't be like so-and-so's children. <laughs> what do they expect? When their child acts out seeking love and attention and positive affirmations. You see, words matter. Words matter. They can either build us up or they can tear us down. Words matter. What we feed our children matters. What we feed our siblings, our spouses, our significant others, our neighbors, our, our, our co-workers, our friends matters. Words matter. Let me get back to Jesus' baptism. In, in baptism, we renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of our sin. You, you see, we're saying, hey, it doesn't have to be this way. Yes. We're not going to stand for it. Yes. Yes. Black lives matter. We renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness. They're not going to have the last word. We're going to reject all the evil powers. We want to move in God's power. So we repent of our sin for uh, allowing some of this to happen. We, we've taken some things for granted. We, we, we thought that we, we got it made and, 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 and oh, 
We won it all with the civil rights, but now we're seeing stuff rolling backwards. We got work to do in our baptism. We do this work. We can do this work. We can accomplish this work because we accept the freedom and power that God gives us to resist the evil. To resist the injustice and the oppression in whatever forms they may present themselves. In whatever forms they present themselves, we might see them coming. They, they might be coming in the dark and we miss them. But however they're coming, we got some power to defeat it. To defeat it. To defeat it. We just have to say, here I am, Lord. Use me. Fill me with your Holy Ghost power. What is it that you want me to do? We confess Jesus Christ is our Savior and put our whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as our Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to all people of all ages and nations and races. We promise to serve Jesus Christ. Well, what is it saying, Matthew? We can't serve two masters. Right. We're going to end up hating both of them. <laughs> we, we can't serve two masters. We got to serve Jesus Christ, who's opened the door to all people, yeah. to all people, to all people. We proclaim that we are children of God and Jesus is our brother. We pray that we may be filled with God's spirit. Can you hear God saying to you, you are my beloved? With you, I am well pleased. Can you hear it? He's got your name there, Ed. You are my beloved. Yeah. And with you, I am well pleased. Mm. Oh, Benny, you are my beloved. Yes, yes. With you, I am well pleased. Mm. Berwick, you are my beloved. With whom I am well pleased. Can you hear your name yeah. being called this day? God loves you. Yeah. God loves you. There's nothing you can do except accept it. Yes. Accept it in a way that you can give thanks for God loving you. Mm -hmm. Is to walk with God. Yeah. Mm. To show God that you appreciate his love. Yeah. There's nothing that you did. There's nothing I did to earn God's love. God just loves us. Yeah. Because God created us. Oh. Words matter. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for loving me. Thank you, God, for loving the people in this congregation. Thank you, God, for loving everyone that's on this Facebook link this morning. Thank you for, for loving, for loving us. Even when we don't seem to appear to be lovable. Thank you. Thank you. We're loving us. Today, as we reflect on our own baptisms, let us be reminded that we, the baptized, are the visible evidence of the presence of Christ in the world. When we claim the new life that we embrace at our baptism, we live the light that we proclaim. We are the witnesses to the activity of the Lord in the midst of this present day reality. The protesters don't get the last word. God gets the last word. God gets the last word. In Proverbs, we've been reading all week and we see that words matter. As we continue reading the Proverbs this month, pay attention to the words. We have been warned. We have been encouraged. We have been advised to listen to the Father's instruction, to be attentive to wisdom, to travel the road less traveled, and to stay on the road that gives life. We have been warned against impurity and infidelity, against adulterous relationships. So I was thinking about those adulterous relationships came to me that it's not just talking about extramarital affairs, 
But I believe we can have adulterous relationships with ideologies mm -hmm. and material possessions. Right. Anything that seduces us mm. away from our loving relationship with God can be yes. harmful. Right. White supremacy isn't just harmful, it's deadly. Yes. Killing the protesters' souls, killing the soul of our nation and democracy, harming the body of Christ when scripture is misused and misquoted for power and to oppress others uh, that Jesus came to liberate. Yes. I was struck by the words of Proverbs chapter 6 verses 12 through 19 this week, as I know some of you were. <coughs> Hear them. A scoundrel and a villain yeah. goes around with crooked speech. Winking the eyes, mm. shuffling the feet, yeah. pointing the fingers well, mm. with perverted mind, mm. desiring evil, continually showing discord. Mm. On such a one, calamity will descend suddenly. In a moment, damage beyond repair. There are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that hurry to run to evil, a lying witness who testifies falsely, and one who sows discord in a family. about those words in light of this past week. Yeah. How timely that we're reading the Proverbs. Crooked speech, showing discord, a lying tongue, a lying witness who testifies falsely, one who sows discord in the family. We are a family. We are a family as the body of Christ. We are a family called the United States of America. We have heard it all this week since the election and before the election. Words matter. That is partially why we're in the state that we are. Another reason is we don't see ourselves as God's beloved children. All of us. If those who are sowing discord can see that they're beloved by God, and they can see every other person as a child of God, a sacred work, They wouldn't be, what you say, Carolyn, being bullies. Uh -huh. You see, you only bully when you don't love yourself. Well. When, you, when, you, when you don't have good self-esteem. Uh -huh. When you don't have somebody that tells you that they love you. Yeah. That tells you that you have a purpose in God's kingdom building work. I want to say a little bit about silence. Because we're talking about words matter, but silence matters too. Yeah. 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 Sometimes saying nothing is good. We don't always have to speak. We need to become comfortable in our discomfort of silence. We can use silence to reflect and pray. Sometimes we don't need words, yet we can still feel one another's thoughts and emotions. Silence can be better than words when those words aren't words of encouragement and uplift. It's hard to take back words that cause hurt and harm. We got to know when to speak. Right. We got to know what to speak. Yes. We got to seek the word like Jeremiah said, I don't know what to say. And the Lord said, don't worry. Oh, I'll right. put the words in your mouth. All you have to do is be willing to go. Yes. You got to be willing to go. Yes. Mm -hmm. you, you see, sometimes silence says we're supporting the status quo. You know, I love my public service announcements. 
So here's one for the advocacy and justice ministry. I see Felicia sitting back there nodding her head. <laughs> Jackie back there, amen. amen. Our, our, our Easter Hill United Methodist Advocacy and Justice Ministry met yesterday afternoon. The work of our advocacy and justice ministry does is very important. It is often behind the scenes work. Though they can be out front at times. Advocacy is public support for or recommendation of a particular cause or policy. Sometimes it is support through demonstrating. Sometimes through letter writing or making phone calls. Sometimes it's making a financial donation. Sometimes it's showing, showing support by speaking up at rallies and city council meetings or board meetings. It could be support for environmental justice or reforming our criminal or educational systems. It could be advocating for more affordable housing, an equitable economy, uh, or to reduce hunger. Remember Jesus overturned the tables yes. in the temple. A ministry of advocacy and justice. Advocate comes from the Latin avocatia, from avocare, meaning summons, call to one's aid. Where is God calling you to be an advocate this year? To aid in bringing, he, to be an aid in bringing healing. Where is God calling you to speak life into a situation? Our words, our actions can make a difference in bringing about God's beloved community. Yeah. If we are going to bring heaven here on earth, if we are going to be instruments of bringing God's light into the dark places in our city, our state, our nation, the world, we can't stay silent. No. We can't wait for someone else to speak. God has given each of us a voice. Yeah. You know, you used to hear that phrase, I'm being a voice for the voiceless. You used to feel that way. But, but you know, I realize everybody's got a voice. And sometimes we're so busy talking that we don't hear those voices of the people on the margins who are trying to speak up for themselves. Who are trying to say, I need some help. I need you. What you're doing is, is causing oppression, is causing hurt. Everybody has a voice. But we do have to help. We, we, we have to lower the mountains and lift up the valleys and help to make the road straight so that people can hear those on the margins who are telling us there's another way to live. They're telling us there's another way to live. If we don't, we are supporting the status quo and saying we are happy with the way things are. Mm. And I don't believe that that is true at all. Amen. Let the waters of baptism mm. renew us yeah. and cleanse us mm -hmm. for our mission and ministry as followers of Jesus the Christ. May the words and teachings of Jesus inform our daily living our words need to be words that lift one another up. Yeah. Our words need to encourage one another. Our words should speak, not death or hurt, but speak life into others and into situations. Right. May our words be filled with love yeah. and hope. Yes. Our words matter. Yes. I'm just here to tell you this morning, if I've said or done anything to hurt you, I ask for your forgiveness. I'm just here to tell you this morning that I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. I'm here to tell you I'm thankful for each and every one of you. For the gifts that you have to offer. For the things that you have taught me. May we be the community of faith. God's beloved community together. We're marching on to Zion. We're marching on to Zion. And the world is going to be a better place because of the work that we do together in the name of Jesus in 2021. Yes. Praise be to God. Amen. Yes. Amen. You don't think words matter? You don't think protests matter? You don't think signing petitions and making phone calls matter? 
after six months of public pressure, millions of petitions signed, and statements from the grand jurors, the two Louisville police officers connected to the murder of Breonna Taylor have been formally terminated by the police department. You know, we don't always see the fruits of our labor, but that doesn't mean that we stop working. We keep working, bending the arc towards justice. Bending the arc towards justice. Sisters and brothers, we got power in Jesus the Christ. As you go, you gotta tell the world, as you go, we got to tell the world about our baptism. We got to tell the world about the power of our baptism and the renewing of life through our baptism. We got to tell the world about this Jesus the Christ. So let us sing. Let us sing.